why you should consider the Certified Supply Chain Analyst course to launch your supply chain career. If you've been watching the news lately, and I'm sure you have, you will probably have heard the term supply chain management mentioned frequently as the recent pandemic has caused havoc in our ability to move materials, components and products around the globe to satisfy demand. In the past, supply chain networks have seemingly operated in the background without much attention, and we generally do not give a second thought as to how that product arrived on the supermarket shelf for our use. My name is Ken Titmus, and over the last 30 years, I've been involved in the education, training, and implementation of supply chain planning systems as an independent consultant and educator. Now that the subject of supply chains has come to the fore, when you think about them, they're generally very long, both in distance and time, have many entities within them which are all connected. If you think about it, all supply chains start with the earth. The earth provides. We pump oil out of the ground, we dig minerals out of the earth, we pick apples off the trees and take fish out of the sea. I call the people that perform these tasks the gatherers. Once these raw materials have been gathered, they can travel through many entities, production processes, warehouses, and modes of transport before arriving on the supermarket shelf or the car showroom floor. Our supply chains only work effectively and efficiently if we have the best educated, trained, and empowered people running and coordinating them. To my mind, this is definitely the career of choice for the coming decade. Maybe you already work in a small portion of the supply chain, but don't really know how it all works and fits together. The advantage of a career in supply chain management is that there are so many faculties to it. The options are almost endless. In fact, the subject is so complex that I believe you will never find a single person that knows everything about all aspects of supply chain management to a great depth. However, it is important to have an overall understanding of the complete supply chain to know how and where you fit into the whole. And then you can dedicate yourself to a single discipline and learn that to a much greater depth. The International Supply Chain Education Alliance, ISCEA, has developed this CSCA program that gives the supply chain student an opportunity to understand a little about the complete subject of supply chain management and assist them in maybe identifying an area in which they would like to study further. And for the future, there are plenty of global certification programs that focus in great depth on the subjects of procurement, manufacturing, distribution, warehousing and transporta transportation, just to name a few. The CSCA program consists of 16 sections broken down into four parts. The first three sessions are in part one and cover the introduction to supply chain management. The next four sessions are included in the second part, the engine that drives supply chain management. Part three covers the six sessions looking at the flow of materials through the supply chain. And the last part covers the last three sessions on some basic pillars that we need to have in place in our organizations. Under the supply chain introduction section, we look at strategy and supply chain costing. In the section relating to the supply chain engine, we will cover some fundamental issues, aggregate or sales and operations planning, as well as the role of inventory in the supply chain and the concept of materials requirements planning. In the largest section relating to the flow of materials in the supply chain, we will cover sourcing, purchasing, manufacturing, transportation, warehousing, and distribution. The last section covers the tools of continuous improvement and lean, as well as the concept of business sustainability and team dynamics. Section one is a supply chain overview. In the first session, we will ask the questions, what is a supply chain and why are we in business? We will briefly look at the financial aspects of supply chain management and how that can affect profit. A key measure is cash to cash cycle time. 
and we will determine how to calculate this metric. We will look at the development of planning systems over the decades from materials requirements planning through manufacturing resource planning to enter enterprise resource planning and what the future holds in this respect. Supply chains are not new. They've been with us for hundreds of years, initially in the form of the spice and silk routes trading between East and West. However, over the last few decades, they have become much longer, larger and more complex as we move thousands of products and raw materials to and from every corner of the globe. They are also very dependent on each other to ensure we have everything we need to manufacture products and then distribute them globally. The second section is on strategy. In this session, we will show how various functional and supply chain strategies can affect your competitive advantage. We will highlight the difference between push and pull supply chains, as well as looking at lead time and the different manufacturing strategies. Section three is on supply chain costing. Here we will look at the supply chain flows in the supply chain, as well as examining various cost drivers in the supply chain, including logistics, facilities, inventory, transportation, sourcing, and inventory costs. We will break the supply chain flows down into information, materials, financial, and return flows. Section four is on some fundamental issues. Under fundamental issues, we will start by exploring forecasting, demand and demand management, as well as looking at measuring forecast error. In addition, we will look at the strategic sales and operations planning. Section five is on aggregate planning. This section looks at the prerequisites and inputs into aggregate planning. Then we will, depending on the manufacturing strategy, show you how to develop both a level and chase production plan. Here we can see how the aggregate sales and operations plan is built from the demand plan and then fed into the tactical master production schedule. We will also look at the capacity checks at each of these two planning levels, namely resource planning and rough cut capacity plan. Section six is on the role of inventory in the supply chain. This is a fairly large section in which we'll be looking at inventory costs, inventory performance, ABC analysis, cycle counting, economic order quantities, safety stock, reorder point and periodic review systems. As part of this section, we will also discuss the various types of inventory in the supply chain, namely raw materials, work in progress, subassemblies, finished products, distribution inventories, and the maintenance, repair, and operating supplies to keep the wheels of your industry turning. In, ad in addition, we will look at the different categories or functions of inventory, such as safety stock, anticipated inventory, cycle stock, decoupling stock, hedging stock, lot sizing stock, and pipeline stock. Section seven is on materials requirements planning. We will, spend this, we will spend this time in this section understanding materials requirements, looking at the database required by this process, how the calculations are made, and the resulting output from the process in the form of planned purchase and works orders. Then in conclusion, we will look at the process of calculating a rough cut capacity plan. Here we can see that the MLP process is driven by the master production schedule and uses the inventory records and bills of materials to generate a materials plan. Section eight is on sourcing. In this section, we discuss the make buy decision, auctions, negotiations and contracts, as well as supplier collaboration and the procurement process. Supplier selection is an important aspect of sourcing and we look at the various issues with regards to this process. Purchasing is section nine. 
Purchasing is an important function in the supply chain, as any dollar saved here goes straight to your profit. So we will look at the purchasing cycle, purchasing documentations, uh, radio frequency ID and barcoding, the concept of consignment stock, as well as vendor managed or vendor owned inventory. In this slide, we can see how the purchasing cycle impacts not only purchasing, but inventory management, operations, and accounting. Section 10 is on manufacturing. In this section, we discuss the production order as well as various plant layouts, manufacturing strategies, and technologies. This matrix shows the relationship between product and process strategies in which we go into quite a depth. Section 11 is on transportation. We discuss in this section the roles of transportation in the supply chain, designing transportation networks, transport costs, freight forwarding and inco terms. In addition, we discuss the hierarchy and difference between public and private carriers and the pros and cons of various modes of transport, air, rail, road, water, and pipelines. Section 12 is on warehousing and distribution. Warehousing activities and storage methods are discussed in this section, as well as materials handling equipment, warehousing layout, cross docking, and warehouse technology. We also look at the concepts of warehousing and distribution. Sales order fulfillment is section 13. In this section, we will discuss customer service and order tracking. And we go through the complete sales order fulfillment process and cycle. Section 14 is on lean and continuous improvement tools. This is quite a large section covering all the important tools we should all know and when and how to use them to continuously improve our supply chains. We look at the development and characteristics of JIT and Lean. We cover the eight waste developed by Ono at Toyota and the seven Lean tools developed by Ishikawa we also discuss value stream mapping as an important process to determine the current state of your processes and then develop a future state with Kaizen events to get you there. We conclude this important section discussing more continuous improvement tools such as benchmarking, error proofing and the five whys to mention just a few. Section 15 is on sustainability. It's a short but important section where we will look at energy and sustainability in the supply chain. Section 16 is on team dynamics. Here we discuss organizational structure, the importance of the customer and working as a team. We also talk about supplier relationships, Maslow hierarchy of needs, and finish up with a topic on dealing with difficult people. Demand-Driven Materials Requirements Planning, or DDMOP. Although this is not part of the certification course and is not tested in the exam, we feel we would be remiss if we didn't introduce it to the new DDMOP methodology, which is destined to replace all other materials planning methodologies over the coming decade. We look at the traditional building blocks of DDMOP, which are the MRP, DRP, Lean, Theory of Constraints, Six Sigma, and how this new methodology was developed from planning based on inaccurate forecasts to using actual accurate demand signals, such as a customer order. We briefly go through the five components of DDMOP and the importance of each, namely strategic inventory positioning, buffer profiles and levels, dynamic adjustment, demand-driven planning, and visible and collaborative execution. In conclusion, if you want to learn more about this important step in your supply chain career, you can contact myself, Ken Titmus, or talk to SAPEX 
on the contact details given concerning the CSEA course. Supply chain management could be the best career choice you will make in your life. I certainly have no regrets on my making that choice some time ago. Good luck in your chosen career and keep well.